The goal for this segment is to continue to flesh out the UI for the create activity. And in particular, we want to show a grid of gray boxes, which will be an indication to the user to tap on those in order to pick an image from their phone. And the way we'll do this is actually quite similar to, to what we've already done with the main activity. We're going to have a recycler view, which has a grid layout manager, and that'll be how we construct this grid of images or grid of gray boxes for now. So the first thing I want to do is in the activity create, in the design tab, let's drag out a recycler view. Let me zoom out a little bit. So I want this recycler view to be constrained to the right end of the parent and left end of the parent. That's how we get zero and zero over here. Also constrained to the top of the parent. And the bottom should be actually constrained to the top of this edit text. And in order to have this to actually take an effect, we have to change the layout width and height to be match constraint. Awesome, so you can see how the recycle view now is taking up whatever is remaining after subtracting out these bottom components. Let's give this an ID of RV image picker. Now in the create activity, the first thing I want to do is get a reference to the three views on the screen, the recycler view, the edit text, and the button. So all these will be late init var because we're going to declare them as member variables, but actually set the value in onCreate. So we'll just say RV image picker, find view by ID with the corresponding ID, and similar for the edit text and save button. Similar to the main activity, the recycler view will have two core components, the adapter and the layout manager. The layout manager is easier, so that'll be equal to the grid layout manager we we'll pass in the context, which is this, and the second parameter is the number of columns. That'll be the get width method on the board size. One thing we can also do here is similar to the main activity, I'm going to call this method set has fixed width, set that's equal to true, because we are guaranteeing that the recycler view dimensions won't change because we've allocated just enough space for it. And now we want to set the adapter. So I'm going to say RV image picker dot adapter, and we're going to set this equal to an image picker adapter, and this is the class that we're going to define. This will take in three parameters. First is the context, and then we are going to pass in a, a list of the images that the user has chosen. And so I want to define that as a, another variable up here. Call this private val chosen image URIs. There's going to be a mutable list of URI. So a URI, we have to import this, is a uniform resource identifier. You can kind of think of it like a string, which unambiguously identifies where does a particular resource live. And so the resource in our case is an image. This is an image which lives on the phone. It's physically stored on the phone. The URI is describing what is the directory path to locate this photo. So when the user has picked two or three photos, for example, there will be two or three elements in this list, two or three URIs. So that'll be the second parameter. And the third parameter will be the board size. Let's have Android Studio help us to create this class. We'll extract it to a separate file. And the first parameter, I'll rename it to be context, the private val context. Second parameter is the chosen image URIs. And I want this to be just a normal list and not a mutable list. And the third parameter is the board size. And all of these should be private val. Just like before, we would like to define an inner class view holder, and that will be what we par parameterize the constructor of the image picker adapter by. So I'll define inner class view holder, which inherits from recycler view, view holder. And once we've defined this inner class, now we can go ahead and override the three members or three methods of the adapter. Okay, so the get atom count is straightforward. The number of images that the user has to pick is the number of pairs in this game. So if I have a 24 card memory game, then the user has to pick 12 images and we should be returning 12 here. So that'll be board size dot get num pairs. That's why we passed in the board size as a constructor parameter. And now let's implement the onCreate view holder. So again, this is gonna be quite similar to what we already did in the memory board adapter. I'm gonna call layout inflator dot from, pass in the context is a constructor parameter. And we're going to inflate a custom layout file that we'll define. I'll call it card image, parent and false. All right, this is going to be a view. And let's now define this card image resource file. 
I'm going to have the root element here be a linear layout because we can keep this file a little bit simpler. And this is going to be really straightforward. There's no need to embellish the design with any kind of card elevation or rounded ed edges or anything like that. So the only thing I, we need to do is drag out an image view. Cool. And so I want to just hard code the width and height just to make this look a little bit more realistic to be 100 dp each. Give this an ID of IV custom image. And let's change the scale type to be center crop, just like we had done earlier. And let's also provide some margin on this element, just so that the card views that we show in the creation and the create activity aren't glued next to each other. There's going to be some space in between them. So I'll search for margin here and set this equal to 8 dp. Cool. Uh, one more thing is that the parent element, the linear layout, I want the height of this to be wrap content. And then finally, we want the image view inside of the linear layout to be centered. So we're going to set the gravity of the linear layout to be center. And then one more thing we can do here also is on the image view, if there is no image selected, which will be the default state, then I want to set the background color of the image view. And we're just going to have this be a hard coded color, which is coming from the Android system called darker gray. And you can't see that in the preview because we are using this sample image, but you'll see it when we run the app. So going back to the image picker adapter, now we have this proper card image that we're inflating. And similar to what we did last time, this image view, it shouldn't have a hard-coded height of 100 dp. We should instead be making proper use of the space of the screen. And so we're going to do something quite similar. So I'm going to look at the width of the parent, which is the recycler view, how much space have we allocated for the recycler view. And I want to divide, partition that up into however many images the user should pick across. So that's the board size dot get width. That will be the card width. And then the card height, the maximum allowable card height will be the height divided by the number of rows in our board, which is board size dot get height. And again, similar to last time, we're going to define a card side length, which is the minimum value of the card width and the card height. So we're going to have to import math.min from Kotlin. And so now we can grab a reference to this image by using the ID. So I'll say view, which is the linear layout plus the image view. And then inside of that view, we're going to find the image view with this particular ID, r.id.iv custom image. We're going to get the layout parameters. And on the layout parameters, now we can set the width and height to be the card side length that we just computed. And finally, the return value of this onCreate view holder is a view holder. So we are going to construct this new view holder class and pass in the view that we inflated. We can actually make this card height a val just because we're not changing any of these again. So similar to the view card width card height, because these values are not changing, we can set all these to be val. And finally, the on bind view holder method. So the intention here is given a particular position, we want to define how do we display the UI. There are two cases here. So if you think back to the second constructor parameter, the list of image URIs, so let me actually rename this to be just image URIs. So if the position that we're binding here is less than the size of the image URIs, that means that, means that the user has actually picked an image for this position, and we should show that image. On the other hand, if the position is larger than image URIs, the size of image URI. So that means that there, we should just show the default kind of gray background to indicate to the user that they still need to pick an image. If the position is less than image URIs.size, that means that we should showing the image selected in the image view. So I'll delegate the work there to be in this bind method. So I'll say image URIs.position. On the other hand, if position is greater than or equal to the size of the image URIs, the user hasn't yet picked an image at this point. So we'll just say holder.bind. There's not really much to do, but we're just going to define this method.bind. So 
there are two methods now that we're going to find in the view holder, one which is bind without any parameters, and the other has one parameter, which is the URI at that position. The view holder is wrapping the custom view that we defined in card image XML. So we'll grab a reference to the image view by saying private val IV custom image, and that'll equal the find view by ID on the item view. Now that we have a reference to the image view, in the first version of the bind method, the one which takes in a URI, all we need to do is set the image URI on that IV custom image. And the other thing we will want to do is set a null click listener, which basically means that we don't want to respond to clicks on this image view. So in the second case, this is where we want to actually be able to listen for the user tapping on this square, on this image view, because that will be an indication that they want to choose an image. So what we'll, what we'll do is we'll say IV custom image dot set on click listener. And we'll implement this in the next part. The goal is to launch an intent for the user to select photos. Let's try it and see what it looks like. So as our app gets a little bit more complicated, one thing that's worth investing in is thinking about how can we improve the efficiency of getting to the create activity. Right now we have to go into the menu, tap on a couple different buttons, and then finally get there. One thing we can do, which is a hack for developer efficiency, is back in main activity, in the onCreate function, we can directly create the intent to navigate to the create activity. So this will be similar to what we're doing when we tap on the menu option, but we'll just do it right away. So I'm going to create a new intent, pass in the medium board size, and then launch the activity right away. This is definitely not something that we want to ship to production, but in general, anytime you have an opportunity to improve the efficiency with which you develop, it's worth investing in. So now when we start the app, you can see we get a brief glimmer of the main activity, but now we're navigating directly into the create activity. We're seeing nine gray squares here because we hard-coded in the board size of medium, and what these gray squares are communicating to the user is that they can tap on them in order to select a photo from their device, and that will be what's used in order to create their custom memory game. One quick improvement we can make is if I scroll up or down in the recycler view, we see this purple shadow, which communicates to the user that there's no more content in the recycler view, but that doesn't make sense in our context because we are guaranteeing the size of the recycler view. So if we go into the RV image picker and look for over scroll mode, then we can set that to never and address that issue. Hey, one quick tip I wanted to share with you. If you're using an emulator like I am, then in the next part, we're going to be using some photos that live on your phone or on your emulator as part of building out the app. And so if you're like me, you probably don't have some photos by default on the emulator. And so I wanted to show you really quick how you can do that. So if you have a image like this one, then all you need to do in order to have it show up in your emulator is drag and drop it onto the emulator. And that'll copy the file. And now in order to have it show up, open up the list of all apps and look for photos or whatever is your gallery app on your emulator open up that gallery app. And I found that sometimes it's helpful to force restart the photos app and then open it up again. And hopefully we should now see this new photo that we drag and dropped onto the emulator. Now we can see the image that was previously on our laptop and now it's on our emulator. So this is the easiest way for you to take images that are on your computer, drag them into the emulator, and then you can use them in subsequent parts when we start to build out the ability to choose photos from your phone in order to customize the memory game. In the next segment, we'll hook up the behavior of what should happen when a user taps on these gray image views. If you're still with me, hit that like button and subscribe and turn on that bell icon so you know when the next part comes out.